Hey guys, welcome to Travel Feels. Today we're gonna to be talking about five things you need as a filmmaker. Nowadays, filmmaking is more accessible than ever before in history. You can buy a cheap camera and great lenses and get really high quality video, even from just things like your phone. Um, recording 4K and all that, it's crazy nowadays. But I'm gonna go through five things that I think every filmmaker should have to up your game. And it doesn't mean that you're gonna go to the store now and buy all these things at once. I think these are things to build up for and buy as you go along. You know, you do a few jobs, then you invest in some more gear and you do more jobs and invest in more gear. Also, when it comes to investing in gear, make sure it's something that's worthwhile investing in. There's a lot of things that aren't really gonna be that useful or you're not gonna use that often. The things I recommend you buy are things that you're gonna use on every shoot. And these five things are some of those things that I use on 90% of my shoots. First off, you need camera support and stabilizers. You need something like a tripod or a monopod or glide cam so your footage isn't all shaky all the time. One of the biggest giveaways that the production quality isn't very high is shaky footage, especially that little micro jitter that happens in a lot of DSLR cameras. But you can easily eliminate that with something like a monopod or a tripod or a steady cam or gimbal or whatever suits your project. Each tool has a different purpose um, sometimes I'm on a monopod, sometimes I need a tripod and it just needs to be locked off. Sometimes I'm using a gimbal or a steady cam, or sometimes it makes more sense to have something like a shoulder rig. But I find that the most useful pieces of equipment for me have been a monopod and a glide cam. A monopod is kind of like a tripod, it just has one leg. The better monopods have little feet on the bottom which make it a lot more stable and cut out a lot of that jitter, but it also helps you to do smooth movements with it and not get any shake while you're doing the movements. If you don't have the feet on the bottom, it's a lot shakier and a lot harder to do smooth movements with a monopod. If you wanna do weddings or any kind of live events or any kind of run a gun, I highly recommend getting a monopod. It's totally worth the investment. Next, I would invest in a steady cam. I really like the glide cam steady cams. Um, they're just really well built and you can get them really cheap, especially the older versions. Um, there isn't that much difference between the new and old versions in my opinion. And they can be a little bit hard to get used to at first, especially the balancing process. But it's not too bad, once you get the hang of it, the balancing is super easy and quick. And you're never gonna run into any problems with um, it malfunctioning like a gimbal might have. Um, so that's why a lot of times for run and gun shoots, I really like the glide cam because I can always trust it. It's not gonna break in the middle of my shoot and it's just really durable, easy to travel with. And what I like to do is I have a Manfrotto base plate on the glide cam and so that way I can take the camera really quickly and easily from the glide cam and put it on the monopod or switch back and forth. And this has been my saving grace when I shoot weddings. I shoot weddings by myself usually and this allows me to go really quickly from monopod to glide cam um, depending on what's going on in the situation. If you wanna learn about wedding filmmaking, I have a course that I made last year on my whole workflow and process and how I make wedding films. And if you use this coupon code, you're gonna get a nice discount on it. There's only a limited amount of those coupons, so make sure you get yours if you're interested in wedding filmmaking. Also, if you wanna learn about color grading, I made a course just recently on it. I go through my whole workflow and process and here's a coupon for you to save big on that one. I'll also link the courses down below. So for any kind of event videography, I would highly recommend a monopod and a glide cam just because they're so easy and quick to work with. You can really move around fast and get tons of cool shots. Next, you need good sound. People can forgive a lot with image quality in video, but bad sound, it's just terrible to watch and listen to. It's just so distracting, you can't pay attention. It's just really not a good experience. So you really need good audio. If you're just starting out, I think it's best to invest in a little shotgun mic that goes on top of your camera. This can be really versatile to capture uh, talking if it's close enough or just ambient sounds and it'll really help your production quality when it comes to sound. 
um, rather than just recording straight into the camera. If you're doing any talking head interviews or anything with somebody talking, you're gonna need to invest in lav mics. Now there's tons of different options for lav mics nowadays, but I would go for a wireless setup. I've used these Sennheiser lav mics for a long time now. Um, I don't even know how many years ago I bought these and they're still super good. Um, no issues with them and just really helpful in so many situations to get good audio. And if you want really high quality for let's say an interview or anything like that, then I would recommend the Rode NTG3 mic. That's what I'm using right now. Super high quality and uh, just a great tool. Shotgun mics are much better than lav mics at getting the nice bass in the voice and those warm tones. Um, but both are good. Um, a lot of times I use both at the same time just to make sure. So I'll have a lav on the person and a shotgun. Just so if something goes wrong with one or the other or one mic picks up the sound better than the other in that certain situation, then I have that backup. So sound is super important. Should be one of the first things you're investing in. Next, I would invest in lenses, especially really fast ones. And what I mean by a fast lens, it's a lens that can go to a really small number aperture. This means that you can get more depth of field and create more cinematic shots. And also, if you're shooting in really low light conditions, you can get a lot more light into the camera with a fast lens. So these are really crucial. And lenses are a great investment because they don't really drop in value over time that much. They kind of hold their value. And especially if you buy them used, you can a lot of times sell them for the exact same amount or even make a little bit of a profit depending on what kind of deal you got when you bought it. So definitely invest in a good lens. One of my favorite lenses that I use all the time that's filming right now is the Sigma 18 to 35 1.8. Now it only works on crop sensored cameras, but it's a great lens. It's one of the fastest zoom lenses there is, and it just has a really nice look to it. I also like wide lenses much better than zoom lenses. I find that they're just much more versatile. With zoom lenses, you're always getting that same kind of close up shot most of the time, unless you're just really far away from the subject. But with a wider lens, you can go up closer, you can get nice wide shots, just get a wide variety of shots. So if there was one focal length that you had to get, I would say go for a 35 mil. But the Sigma 18 to 35 just covers a really nice range. Next, I would buy a filter, specifically a variable ND filter. When you're shooting video, you wanna always keep your shutter speed to double whatever your frame rate is. And sometimes it's so bright outside and you wanna shoot shallow depth of field, a smaller number aperture, and it's just way too bright. So what you do is you use an ND filter to make it darker and that way you can keep your shutter speed at double whatever your frame rates is and still shoot at a shallow depth of field. This is one of the biggest tips to getting nice cinematic footage outside, especially when it's really bright out. Another thing I find is that digital sensors on cameras these days are just way too sharp. And so I like to use filters that kind of soften things up a little bit and bloom highlights just a little bit. I like to use what's called a black satin filter from Tiffin. And what this does is it softens up the image just a little bit to take that edge off that digital look, but it still keeps all that fine detail in it. And it also helps with highlights a little bit, as you can see here which really helps with digital sensors because the roll off into the highlights can be really harsh and kind of ugly looking. That's one of the big reasons why I think Hollywood didn't switch out of film to digital for the longest time was just that the dynamic range and the highlights just weren't as nice as in film. And still a lot of people shoot on film in Hollywood. So a variable ND is a must. And if you wanna make your image even better looking, I would say buy something like the black satin filter or a black pro mist, which is a little bit more intense than the black satin filter. Lastly, I would say invest in lights. And luckily for you, LED lights are just taking off. And because they're becoming so popular, it means that the quality of LEDs is going up and the cost is coming down. I really like the Aperture Lightstorm lights. I have three of them and I use them on all kinds of shoots, high production and low production. They're just really handy, really powerful, with a high CRI value, which means that the color isn't gonna skew in your videos too much to green or magenta or anything like that. And one of my favorite things is that they can be controlled through a remote 
which is super handy when you're working as a one-man band. You can set up your lights and then you can just dial them in as you're looking right at the camera. So you don't always have to run to the light and then come to the camera and look at what it looks like and then go back and forth. This way you can see exactly what your changes are doing and do it all from behind the camera while you're looking at your image. They're super handy. I highly recommend aperture lights. Now they are a bit pricey. So lights are one of the things that I wouldn't invest in necessarily right away. But if you're doing a lot of interviews or anything like that, I highly recommend getting these LED lights. But you can use pretty much any light as long as you're using them properly and using diffusion and different techniques to really enhance that lighting. I'm gonna be going through some different lighting techniques later on to help you guys out if you're doing any interviews or short films or anything that you need to light. But I think lights in general are one of those things that you can easily rent for pretty cheap and you don't have to invest thousands of dollars into them. But again, if you're using them every day, then maybe it is something that's worth investing in. Like for me, these aperture lights, I use them all the time, almost on every shoot nowadays, including right now. So they've really paid off for me. Once you get into higher quality productions where the budgets are higher, a lot of your gear you can actually rent to the production. So on top of your day or package rate, you can add in, let's say your camera rental or lenses or your lights. So these things can actually become a source of revenue for you. So that's an important thing to keep in mind when you're doing bigger budget projects. What kind of things can I rent to the production and make money back from? And then hopefully it pays off the light or the lenses and then you're just making free money basically and you have a free lens. But be really careful. For example, a lot of people buy a camera but cameras just go outdated so quickly right now. So if you're not renting it to enough productions and making that money back, then you're probably just gonna lose a lot of money. But again, if you're using it often and you're able to get that rental money back from your gear, then that just makes sense. Now notice I didn't talk about investing in a fancy camera. Cameras are just so high quality nowadays. Even the lower end consumer DSLRs, they just have really high quality video in them. And when you pair that with a nice lens and nice audio and good lighting and good filters, then you can get a really high quality image out of those cameras. I know some people who make amazing films that you would never believe are filmed on a cheap DSLR camera. So don't worry so much about investing in cameras. I know it's not sexy to say invest in filters and microphones, but those are the things that are gonna make a big difference in your production value. Whereas the camera is gonna make some difference, but, but not as much. Like if you're gonna invest all your money into a $10,000 camera and you have no good lights or good sound, then your videos are still gonna look like crap because you're not lighting it properly and the sound sucks, so nobody cares that you're filming it on a $10,000 camera. And it's also really easy to get caught up in gear, always thinking that, oh, if I just had that lens or just had that camera, then I would be super good. And I mean, it helps, but it's just not true. It really depends on how you use those tools. People have even filmed feature Hollywood films on just an iPhone. And with good quality audio and good lighting, they were able to do amazing things. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll put links down below of all the different things that I like to use. And remember, you don't need all this stuff at once. Build up slowly and invest in the important things. That's it for today. Remember to like and subscribe and comment down below if you have any questions and enjoy the filmmaking process.